So hello everyone. I am Jennifer Williams and I would like to welcome you to a heart healthy holiday. We are here to discuss all things heart health. So today we are so honored to have with us Dr. Jeffrey Lander, Medical Director of the Cardiac Care Unit here at CBMC. He's also the Co-Director of Sports Cardiology for RWJ Barnabas Health and the President of the New Jersey Chapter of the American College of Cardiology. Our heart beats extra loud during the holidays, so we must not neglect it. Whether we're busy running errands, sneaking in a few extra holiday cookies, because I know around here there are so many around the office, or just generally stressed with the amount of stuff we have going on, we are here to help you keep your heart in tip-top shape. So if you have a question for Dr. Lander, please just drop us a comment below and please help me welcome Dr. Jeffrey Lander. Hi, Dr. Lander. How are you today? Hey, Jennifer. I'm great. Good to see you and hello to everybody watching out there. Looking forward to, to chatting and helping answer some questions people may have about their hearts and a healthy holiday. Yes. Yeah, so let's get right into it. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I'm a, I'm a cardiologist. I practice here at a Cooperman Barnabas Medical Center. Split my time between the hospital there and my office is right around the corner in West Orange, taking care of a wide, wide range of patients from adults all the way down through high school kids. And it's a, a great variety. You get to see a lot of, a lot and interact with all different types of people, which is one of, one of the parts of the job, so to speak. Yes, that's awesome. So let's get right into it. Our hearts. It. So during the holidays, we're running around, people tend to try, you know, we try to, we ignore things. What um, are the signs and symptoms that we should be looking out for? And why is it so important for our health? So if you're feeling unwell, we should seek a medical attention. Why is this so important to not ignore the signs? No, it's de definitely important. Please don't ignore signs. The reason um, is if there is something bad that's going on with your heart or your health in general, you know, if we can pick that up early and come on in and get it checked out, it's often a better prognosis when, when we find these things early instead of just lingering, saying, oh, maybe this will pass and it'll go away. I always say err on the side of caution. If you're not sure, come on in, call your physician. If it's something really serious, come on into the emergency department and we will certainly get it checked out to make sure that we're doing okay. And the, the things we really, from a heart standpoint, want to look out for, you know, the big thing that we all worry about is, is a heart attack. Mm -hmm. um, some of the, the common signs and symptoms of a heart attack are a chest pressure, you know, something that's lasting more than just a few minutes, some shortness of breath or trouble breathing associated with some sweating, maybe some jaw pain on the left side radiating down the left arm. These are some of the typical presentations that we can see. Uh, what we can see in women in particular, sometimes we see some more atypical presentations of a heart attack. So instead of that usual chest pain and shortness of breath, we may see some other signs, things like a sore throat or some nausea and even some upper back pressure can be a sign of a heart condition. So these are the things we wanna really look out for. And if you're noticing them, call your physician, get those checked out, it's important to do so. Don't ignore it. Yes. No ignoring. And you know, it is such a wonderful time of year. We get together, but it also can just be so stressful. What are some tips you can share with us to help reduce stress? It is just like you said, this is a fun time of year, but it's a super busy time of year. We're all running around trying to see friends and family and get everything in. Lots of commitments. Uh, but remember, it's it's okay to say no. Um, you know, be realistic. You're one person can only be in one place at one time, doing one thing at a time. So set some boundaries and know, know when you need to take a break. It's okay, to, it's okay to do so. If you're feeling tired, grab a quick nap. You know, maybe take time out, watch a movie, something fun for the holidays, read a book, go for a walk. If it's not too cold outside, you know, break it up a little bit, get, get some of that you time or me time in. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, all year long, we focus on unhealthy habits and maintaining a heart healthy lifestyle. And while it can be more challenging to do so during the holidays with all that delicious food around, um, it's important to keep up those healthy habits throughout the holiday season. So that is a good segue into my next question for you. It's a two-parter and I'm going to get a little personal with you. What is, so there's all these snacks and treats around. So first part is, what is your favorite holiday snack? And then secondly, you know, what, what tips do you have with us, you know, to keep things in moderation? Should we be cutting out some of our favorite treats? Can we still indulge? What, what advice do you have for us? For me, it's the right, so, so that's a tough one because there's so many delicious treats this time of year. 
Um, but if anyone who knows me and knows my family, we're big cookie people. Yeah. Big, big cookie people. So in particular, delicious sugar cookie. That's that's for me. That's 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 what I look forward You're to. Speaking my language, Dr. Lander. This is <laughs> this is a match made in Facebook Live heaven. Right. Those who know know. Come on. <laughs> um but what I what I will say is is I, I'm a fan of of everything in moderation. Right. The vast majority of the time, moderation is OK. I, it's very rare for me to say never eat this or never, never eat that. It's a special time of year celebrating with friends, celebrating with family to have a, a little treat. That's OK. But, you know, instead of going in for that second piece of cake or or that second cookie or another an extra big piece of prime rib, m moderation, small, small pieces, you know, take a little taste and set it aside. Um, for me, I know that me personally, when I get in trouble, so when, I, when I'm hungry, I'm hungry. I know I, I want I want something now. Um, mm -hmm. And when that happens, it's easy to grab a bag of chips, grab some pretzels, something that's easy. Um, so what I like to do to prepare ahead, knowing that I'm going to be hungry and want to eat is Sunday night or at some point, what I'll do is I'll chop up a bunch of vegetables, maybe some peppers, some cucumbers, get some carrots aside. Um, so that when I am hungry, it's it's cut, it's ready to go. I'll take that, maybe a little bit of hummus or some dip, and use that instead of grabbing for those that extra cookie or or those those snacks that are hard to resist sometimes. So this way, it's just it's prepared, it's easier to get to, and that that sometimes that little bit can make the difference. At least it does for me. Yeah, all in the balance, right? Yes. And on the other end of that. Um, exercise. So, you know, it's important all year long. But again, this time of year, with everything going on, it's sometimes hard to squeeze it in. So tell our audience, why is it so important to make sure that you do get get that bit in? It is. So like we mentioned, you know, we, we focus all year round of eating well and staying active, staying healthy. It's doubly important during the holiday time because we may cheat a little bit on our diets, have that, you know, little extra bite of cookie or cake. So keeping up with that exercise will, will certainly help. Um, there's tons of medical benefits to exercise. Uh, exercise certainly helps reduce the risk of illnesses, helps keep our muscles strong, our bones strong, strengthens them. Um, in addition, there's plenty of emotional benefits and mental benefits to exercise as well. So it's really a, across the board, something that we want to we want to stick to. And if it's something, you know, with New Year's resolutions right around the corner, a lot of us want to start a new exercise routine. Uh, I'm a big proponent, a big fan. Two things I would say to that. One is if you're new to exercise or looking to ramp up what you're currently doing, go slow. You know, start low and, and slowly build up. A lot of times when we jump in too soon, that's when we can start to see some problems or even get frustrated saying, oh, why can't I do this or do that? But remember, it's a process. It's a slow process. Start slow, slowly ramp it up. Um, and if you are new to exercise or like we said, wanting to ramp up a little bit, if you have questions, always see your doctor first, right? Check with your doctor. Um, if you have underlying health concerns, heart concerns, lung issues, any kind of health concerns, always check with your doctor first because they oftentimes can help guide you on what types and amounts of exercise may be appropriate for you. Yeah, we got it right for our heart. I like that too. You know, if you start slow, it's easier to maintain rather if you go right into it right away. Then sometimes we fall off that way. So I like Very that cool. for sure. Um, and a lot of people too just see themselves find themselves traveling a lot this year, whether they're in a long distance car ride or on an airplane. Do you have any tips for holiday travel? Yes, of course. You know, we're all traveling to see friends and family. Sometimes it's on a plane. Sometimes it's a long car ride, like you mentioned. But there's definitely things we can do to stay active because remember, it's always important to be active. So, so stay as active as possible, whether that be if you're on a car ride, going for, you know, stopping, taking even just taking a bathroom break to walk around a little bit, stretch your legs, get out, take some laps around the car, around the rest area, et cetera. If you're on the plane, I know uh, at Cooperman Barnabas, we have some health tips, I think, that we can post, mm -hmm. some exercises that we can do to stay active on the plane. Um, but there's little things that we can do. And if you build up these little things, it, it makes it makes a difference. Um, as far as eating, you know, again, I know we talked about this is a tough time of year, but we want to look for those healthier options. Right? Traveling in general can be tough to find the healthy options. But if, if you look closely, we can find them. You know, for example, 
want to look for maybe a high fiber, high protein option, because these are some of the types of food that make us stay fuller longer, make us want to snack a little bit less, eat a little bit less. Um, so look for those healthy food options. And as always, stay nice and well hydrated. Drink plenty of water. Always, I have my big water every day. Everyone makes fun of me. They're like, do you drink all of that? And I was like, I do, I try, I really do. So, I, I do the same. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we've talked about the importance of keeping active and, and exercise for our heart, but also self-care and our, our mental state also helps our, our heart. Um, you know, it's, it's important to not neglect. So do you have any tips for us too um, about self-care and why that's important for, you know, our overall health and of course our heart health? Yeah, so, you know, I think one of the good, the positive things that came out of COVID is it's really forced us to focus a little bit more on self-care. You know, it's kind of a buzzword we hear all over the place now. And it really is important. So, so what is, what is self-care? Um, it really means taking taking the time to do things that help you live well, uh, improve both your physical and mental health. The reason this is important, that can help us manage stress. Um, it could help us lower the risk of illnesses, and it can actually increase our energy, make us overall feel feel stronger, feel improved, feel a bit feel a bit better, mm -hmm. a little better on to take take on those holiday challenges. Yeah. And then this next question I have for you, I'm going to just say it quietly to everyone, but today is the first day of winter. So winter weather is upon us. And while we may not have a, a white Christmas this weekend, we are going to have a very cold one, but snow, snow, it does come in a little bit, hopefully not this year, badly. But if you do suffer um, from a heart condition, what are the do's and the don'ts of snow shoveling? Right. So, so you said the, uh, for the cardiologist shoveling, that's the S word for us. That's a bad word for cardiologists. Um, you know, that, that new fallen snow winter wonderland looks pretty, looks gorgeous. Um, but it can be, it can be dangerous, particularly if we have underlying heart conditions. The reason why is shoveling itself is a pretty strenuous activity. It gets that heart rate up pretty quickly. Um, it, it's, we consider that vigorous exercise. Now, if you take that strenuous activity and you couple it with the changes that we see from cold weather, so cold weather can have some effects on the body. What it does, cold weather actually increases our blood pressure and it constricts those arteries of the heart. So those two things combined together, coupled with the shoveling, a strenuous activity can be a setup for a heart attack. So first and foremost, in general, I, re I tell my heart patients, please don't shovel, right? So we really want to avoid shoveling. Sometimes there's nothing else we can do. Sometimes we have to shovel, right? Sometimes there's no, ways, no way around it. If you can avoid it, great. If you can't, there are a few tips that we can do to help minimize our risk while shoveling. So number one, um, take frequent breaks. Right? Don't go for long periods of time, do a little bit of shoveling, rest, take a little break, get back to, back to shoveling, another break, et cetera. Number two would be snow. So a snow machine, right? So something to help that you just push, a snow blower is better than snow shoveling. Um, that's, that's, certainly a, that's certainly a big help. And if you do have to shovel, what we recommend is it's better to push the snow than kind of lift and throw it. So th those are some of the tips that, that we look for. One, don't shovel if you can help it, but if you have to, use a snow blower. If you can't use a snow blower and you have to shovel, push, don't lift and throw. Yes, th those are good tips. And hopefully we'll put it, hopefully no one has to deal with any of these things this winter. Yes. <laughs> And just, uh, you know, we always on our Facebook lives, and this is like a really great time of year to do it as we do head into a new year, those annual checkups. Why is it so important? What screening should we be doing and doctor's visits should we be doing for our heart? You know, what's, what, what's out there for us? What should we be doing? Right. So, oh, it's super, super important. Um, great question. Um, throughout the year, it's always important to keep those, those wellness checks with your primary care physicians, your primary care providers. Um, it's important on so many levels. One, it builds a relationship with your primary care physician. They get to know you over time. You get to know them. Kind of sets a nice baseline. Plus, with, with these 
routine exams, it helps with screening to see, is there anything underlying going on, anything not quite normal that we may pick up early that we want to investigate a little bit further? For example, your provider may notice a murmur, may notice a slight change in your EKG. You know, you might tell them, hey, you know, I used to go out and do a brisk walk for a mile and a half and feel great. Now, all of a sudden, I after half a mile, I'm just not feeling myself anymore. You know, little subtle sign that you may not notice, but your doctor or provider will pick up on. Um, and if we do pick up these things early, there's more testing we can do, perhaps a referral to a specialist, and we can find out if there's something going on. And if there is, it's always better to pick these things up early than let them sit and worsen over time. Don't wait. That's don't wait. We see see your provider. See your doctor. We, we started. Don't wait. We're going to end with don't wait. Um, so is there anything else you'd like to add today, Dr. Lander? Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we have a great team uh, at RWJBH and Cooperman Barnabas Medical Center. Um, and everyone listening, if you have if you have questions, you have concerns, anything at all, you know, feel free to contact me, contact our team. We're, we're here. We're here to help. That, that's that's what we're here for. So don't don't be shy. Don't be bashful. Um, See, talk to your providers. Sure. And um, Dr. Lander's office number uh, for everyone is 973-467-1544. So again, 973-467-1544. We'll write that and pin that. And if you do have a question, you could leave a comment here and we'll get that to Dr. Lander and he'll, he'll answer it for us. So Dr. Lander, I know that you're so busy this time of year, but thank you so much for taking the time out to be with us today. We're so appreciative. My, my pleasure. I hope everyone has a, a safe, happy holiday season. Yes. And on behalf of everyone here at Cooperman Barnabas, we wish you and your families a, a very heart, happy holiday and a, a safe and healthy new year. So we'll see everyone next year. Take care.